entertainment highlights for Sunday night on BBC One. After Praise B at 7.15, the boys say bon appétit in butterflies. <laughs> I like eating a meal with my sons. It's like watching a documentary on bull seals. <laughs> at 7.45, part one of Richard Attenborough's powerful film, Cry Freedom. You see, we know how you live. We cut your lawns, we cook your food, clean your rubbish. How would you like to see how we live? At 9.30, That's Life exposes the naked truth behind a department store changing room and manages to get a whole bank singing. At 10 past 10, Heart of the Matter meets the patients who caught AIDS from a Florida dentist. The dentist is now dead, but the story of those patients has swept America, rekindling the fears and panic of the early 80s. Joan Bakewell back for a new series of Heart of the Matter, just part of Sunday night on BBC One. In 10 minutes on one, three contestants from the North West display their culinary skills as the search continues for this year's Master Chef. First, porridge, or the lack of it, figures largely in the animated version now of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Wogan returns this week with a star-studded lineup featuring Donald Pleasance, Alita Adams, Leslie Nielsen, and Priscilla Presley. And to start the week on Monday, Terry talks to Oscar-winning actress and singer Cher. So join Wogan on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 on BBC One. Now on one, prepare to have your taste buds tantalised as we join Lloyd Grossman and guests for the last of the regional finals of Master Chef. Welcome to MasterChef 1991 as we continue our nationwide search for the best amateur cook in Britain. As always, the task facing our contestants is a simple one. Prepare a championship quality three course meal for four and do it in just two and a half hours. This week we have the last of our regional finals and our contestants come from the northwest of England. In fact, they're virtually neighbours, which proves that a tiny area between Blackpool and Preston is now the gastronomic epicentre of the northwest. In the red kitchen this week, Linda Hinton from Lytham St Anne's, an expedition turned electrical contractor. She still turns her hand to the odd makeover, as well as writing for the British Show Pony Society magazine. Her daughter, Katie, is one of the country's most successful young riders. Next in the yellow kitchen, Malcolm Hall from Preston, kingpin of the house building trade and devoted Friday night football player. Evening games of trivial pursuit in the Hall household are of global significance when his mostly adopted family fight it out. Finally in the blue kitchen, Sue Longdon, a supply chemistry teacher from Poulton La Fylde, often to be found behind a camera with one of her three children in front of it. When not snapping, Sue may be seen combing the local shops for blue and white china. Welcome to all of you. Now let's find out what you're going to be cooking for us this evening. Linda, tell us about your menu. I shall be cooking mushrooms in brandy sauce with herb bread, fillets of baby halibut, gently baked, served in a delicate pastry shell with a tangy almond sauce followed by individual French apple tartlets with a raspberry coulis. Malcolm. I'm going to start with uh, a seafood and fruit hors d'oeuvre. The main course is medallion of spring lamb with a tapenade sauce, potatoes and vegetables, and my dessert is a poached peach. And Sue. Uh, I'm starting with Marge tooth stuffed with poached salmon, served with a tomato vinaigrette followed by chicken Moroccan style, rice tin balls, baked cherry tomatoes, and for afters, hazelnut galettes with toffee apples and cassis. Splendid. Well, good luck to all of you. It's now time to send you off to your kitchens, so let's get cooking.
Well, the cooking is well underway, and I must say there's an atmosphere of great tranquility in the kitchens this week. So I suppose they, they cook with serenity in the Northwest. Now, at this time of the competition, I'm always joined by one of the top chefs or food gurus in the country. This evening, I'm joined by one of both, Eugene McCoy, who together with his two brothers, Tom and Peter, are the celebrated and, dare I say, eccentric McCoys of Cleveland Tontine, North Yorkshire. Good evening. Welcome, Eugene. Are you eccentric, McCoys? Not really, no. Uh, I don't know where we get this from, actually, but um, maybe because of a bit of long hair. Well, we used to have long hair, but uh, not now that it cut now. So it's, uh, that could have been part of it. You've been in Cleveland Haunting for what? 13 years, I think. 13 years now. Do you find that you have to react to trends, or do you try to disregard them and just carry on no, doing we just, what you know you can do? No, we just do? carry on, because we know our customers, the type of people that come to us, and I think you've got to look to their needs rather than just going out and putting something on the plate that you've seen somewhere in Switzerland or in France or, you know, whichever restaurant you go to, you know. They basically dictate the terms, I think. Have there been any notable disasters in terms of things that you've thought your customers would go wild about? Yeah, <laughs> lots. Every week. <laughs> Every week, yeah. Uh, you think something's really going to be good and you try and sell them and they turn around and say, well, we'll just have a so-and today, please, or a dove or so, or lobster thunder or whatever, you know. Someone asked me yesterday if I still thought that there was a north-south divide in terms of cooking and eating in this country. Do you think there is? No, I don't think there is, actually. I mean, we get a tremendous amount of people from the south coming up to stay with us and eat with us. And more people now are travelling down, experimenting with the good restaurants in, in, in London and wherever, Oxford and wherever they are. Um, people are broadening their horizons greatly on food. And this is, this show sort of helps that you know, get on, get on the way, actually. Now, do you think, as, as someone who is, is, is firmly a Yorkshireman, do you think you can judge three Lancastrians fairly? Oh, totally, yes. Very fairly, indeed. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to have a look and see what they're doing now. You know, it's really good. <laughs> Excellent, because this is uh, just what we're about to do. And what Eugene and I are going to be doing throughout the cooking time is walking around the kitchens, chatting to the contestants and looking at their techniques. Later on, we're going to be joined by this evening's special guest, Angela Rippon. She's going to help us decide the most important thing of all, which is what's it all taste like. But now I think we ought to go and get into the kitchen. So follow me. Linda, you're doing your individual French apple tarts, yeah? That's right. Can we look at your little fish, which are sitting on top of the fridge, actually? The puff pastry, I assume, yeah? Yep. Yeah. Where does the, um, where does the idea of the almond sauce come from? Because the idea of almond sauce on fish is quite... I mean, in, in Turkey, they use walnut sauce on right, fish. Right, yeah. Is I was going to say, walnuts are, walnuts are bigger on, in, in sauces for fish like that. I think it is an Eastern recipe. Um, it's flavoured with turmeric, so it's slightly spicy. It's an unusual sauce for mm. fish, um, but it's got a tremendous colour the bright yellow yeah. sauce and um, the almonds just give it that unusual flavour and it actually has chicken stock not fish stock um, flavouring the sauce so yeah. I've got and some homemade yeah. chicken stock um, to good. flavour it. Yeah. That's most unusual. Good. Most unusual. Excellent. Okay. Sounds splendid. We should okay. let you get back to slicing your apples. Okay now I think Malcolm is doing something highly scientific. Um, this is spun sugar work, yeah? Sure is. And what do you... Uh, do, do you grease the ladle with anything to keep the sugar from sticking? Yeah, just, just some oil and then, in a moment, if we keep our fingers crossed... Should be all right. It might slide off. Yep. Come on, baby. You want me to push that side down for you? No, Thanks. Right. Yeah. Well, and that's it. it. Yeah. A caramel cage. Well, I think you'd make an excellent midwife. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I think we will let you give birth to the other two in peace. But that's Thanks great. very much indeed. <laughs> Thanks, Malcolm. OK, now, I'm most riveted. I think the most enthralling <laughs> first course I've heard about, the most puzzling. <laughs> I can't believe you're actually going to stuff a monster. to it. You've got... Mange to stuff with poached salmon. Sounds so posy, doesn't it? Well, Eugene was speculating that you'd somehow <laughs> found a six foot long mange to, well, which a whole well, salmon really, was going really to be easy. dropped it's into. No, it is. Yeah, it's really easy. Yeah, you just blanch the mange to, then just get a knife and squeeze it down 
where the string would be, you know. Yeah. And then you just get a little teaspoon and just take it easy. Can't wait to see it. <laughs> I didn't have to do it, but I can't wait to see it. <laughs> now, all the contestants are allowed to bring up to five items with them. And you've brought preserved lemons. Yeah. Do you want to tell us about them? Well, it's, um, it's a Moroccan thing, and all they do is they keep them in a big jar with brine, boiling brine. You have to use very, very thin skinned lemons, and you leave them there for a few weeks. And what happens is it makes them go all squidgy. So you can use a whole lemon, you can put it in a food processor and just whiz it down to that's a sort right. of lemon paste. Yeah. yeah. And that's going to be the, the main flavouring oh, in, yes, those, in those chicken flavoring. thighs. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, we should leave you to your salmon mashing. Right. Great. Okay. Okay, well, I think what we ought to do now is just sort of go over the menus and right. get a feeling of okay. what, what we think about them. Linda is doing mushrooms and brandy sauce, which we haven't seen. The baby yeah. halibut gently baked with a tangy almond sauce and pastry. Then quite a lot of vegetables, which I won't go through. And the individual French apple tarts with raspberry coulis. What about that menu? What do you think about um, it? I'm interested in the, um, in the sauce and the halibut. Yeah. Because she's using chicken stock and, you know, with the, with the nuts. And just have a look to see how it is. It sounds a bit different, that's so it. It's, it sounds a nice way of doing it. Um, also, on see how much uh, Calvados she'd like to put on the tarts. I mean, if there's any left to drink afterwards, it might be very good. <laughs> I see. OK, well, <laughs> we'll be waiting. We'll be wringing out the tarts in a main bowl for a little digestif. Now, Malcolm is doing, he's doing seafood with fruit hors d'oeuvre and then some curry d'agneau with tapenade, which is that Provencal olive type stuff, pomme parisienne, and then poached peaches in those rather intricate caramel cages. Seafood with fruit hors d'oeuvre? Well, that's what we've got to look at. Um, depending on what he's going to use with it. We haven't seen what fruit he's going to use with it. Uh, that could be, that could be interesting, or sometimes it could be a bit of a failure with that. And then Sue is doing the very intricate, the surgically stuffed mange too with poached salmon. I liked the look of that filling very much. It was nice and coarse. Good, it was good. It, it, it does look good. I'm, I'm dying to see how she does it. So that's, yeah. that's interesting for that. And also the, uh, the chicken thighs sounds, it sounds good. The yeah. rest, the, what she's going to put into it, how it's going to be, that's, that sounds good. Because that Moroccan chicken with preserved lemon is, is, a, is a wonderful dish. It's a very interesting flavour. It is. That's, that, that's good. There. I think that's well balanced as well, that menu. So yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's well put together. Is there any one of those menus that you find particularly appealing, or do you reckon they're all sort of evens, or do you think? I think there's something in each of them which, you, which is good. Um, the taste is the thing, the, the, the balance, when you're when, when you tasting it all together, is the, uh, is, is the bit I'm looking for. Um, yeah. But they all have something interesting in each one. <laughs> Linda, you're assembling some herb bread, so you've, you've mashed up various herbs, which are with your butter. Which That's ones right. have you used? Parsley, obviously. Uh, there's thyme, parsley, black pepper, mm. um, and salt. And what's that going to be served with? This is going to be served with the mushrooms in brandy sauce. The mushrooms in brandy sauce. Yeah. And then you'll just spread it rather thickly between those right. slices and um, put it in the oven. Yeah? Wrap it in foil, yep. put it in the oven for about 15 minutes. Mm. That's splendid. Thank you. Malcolm, you're rather delicately taking this lobster apart. I suppose one has to be delicate because lobsters are so expensive these days. Yeah. Um, which bits of it are you going to be using in your... I'm going to use seafood salad. All the tail. All the tail. I'm about there. Yeah, because right that's the down. biggest single piece of meat that a yeah. lobster's got. Yeah, and we're gonna and we're gonna get the meat out of the claws. Right. And we're going to use a bit of that, and uh, we're gonna put it on some salad with a with an orange, a couple of orange segments. Excellent. Well, it sounds very encyclopedic your salad, so I'm looking forward to it tremendously. Thank you. Intriguing combination of the uh, mange too and the salmon, Sue. That's right, yes. The, the peas are nice and crispy and the That's right. salmon's soft. What have we got in here now? We've got some green olives. Uh, um, whole preserved lemon we yep. stuck in the blender. Uh, fresh coriander, fresh parsley, garlic, and a little bit of olive This smells oil. absolutely super. I mean, it really does smell good. Yeah. I'm down to taste this. It's really, really good. And how's the dessert? Uh, it's, oh, I'm going to just check. Good idea. I told you that. <laughs> so we're looking there. Oh, that's yep. about right. You manage. Yep. Looking you were there. That's just about right. Huh? 
That's great. You got your rice in here? Yes. Yes. I've cooked it already. Just needs to be warmed just, up, yes, is it? Just slightly That's great. undercooked, just to. Yeah, I've come out. Just about right, there. I think so, yeah. Yeah. We've got a quick one to fill down. down inside, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. It's hot. Well, the kitchen temperatures are rising, but I must say our three cooks still look remarkably unruffled. And it's now time to introduce our special guest for the evening, Angela Riffin. Hello, Lloyd. Angela, how much cooking do you do yourself? I don't actually do as much as I would enjoy and like to do, because I actually do enjoy cooking. I'm not, I would say, a very sort of adventurous cook, I, and I don't do lots of fiddly things. I, I mean, the, the stuffing of the Mange too, for instance, or making those baskets. Now, that's something that I would actually never do, and I, I mm. admire the, the patience of the people who do. You might not be an adventurous cook in your own terms, but are you an adventurous eater? Yes, I, mean, I do actually love food. I think one of the joys of the job that I do is that over the years I've managed to travel through most of the world. And I mean, I, I have no patience with the people who go to, to the south of France or to Africa or to the Far East and immediately mm. look for fish and chips and tea like Mother used to make. I mean, I can't bear that. I actually do want to eat the local food. I like the, the freshness of the local produce and, and the, the different textures, the different tastes, the different spices that you get around the world and, and the different ideas that come out in the food, the combinations of food. I think the only food that I do not like is Japanese sushi. I love the cooked Japanese food, yeah. but I cannot eat uh, raw fish. Are you, you flogging any raw fish up north? Um, we occasionally do some raw marinated salmon. Um, which has actually been quite popular. I was quite surprised with it. With, uh, like cream mustard sauce or something like that with it. Um, at first, people are a bit wary about it, but once they taste it, it's very good. And we've always been a, a nation of, I mean, raw oysters, for God's sake, right. the most terrifying thing in history. The first man to eat an oyster, it's bravest brave man, man ever. <laughs> yeah, you know? that's right. So I suppose we could learn to, yeah. be, to be great raw fish devotees. Mm. You know, and people eat whelks and things like that, which I mean, I just die if I even <laughs> see a whelk. <laughs> <laughs> Even yeah. in a book. Oh, can't stand it. Hey, <laughs> looking at him. What's your? Is it? Is it fair to say what your current favourite cookbook is, or do you not want to single one out? Um, I, I mean, dear Delia Smith is is a constant companion in the kitchen. Absolutely. But then, so is a cookery book that I brought home with me from America, from from Boston when I was there, which in fact best is food it, in the world uh, in Boston. Well, pretty good seafood from there, that's for sure. <laughs> Um, and a couple of other books. I mean, I, I suppose I've got about four or five favourites that if I think, oh, I'm going to have people around for dinner, there are four or five that I immediately go to because they have a stock of really good things that I know I'm going to like. What's your favourite cookbook, Eugene? Um, well, I can't remember because all the covers have come out of ours because we use them so much in the kitchen, so we don't know which... I'm, I'm sure we just go through the pages and have a look. It's all marked down. I must interrupt to say that the green ten has appeared on the video wall. And that means that we've reached a critical moment in the competition. There are just 10 minutes of cooking time left. Flashing lights tell us that time is up, so drop those cheese graters, the cooking time is over. In the red kitchen, Linda Hinton gave us mushrooms and a brandy sauce with herb bread, followed by baby halibut and puff pastry with baked parsnips and cauliflower fritters. For pudding, she cooked apple tarts with raspberry coulis. Malcolm Haw in the yellow kitchen made an hors d'oeuvre of seafood with fruit, then went on to carré d'agneau with red currant sauce and baby vegetables. He finished with poached peaches in caramel cages. In the blue kitchen, Sue Longdon started with mange tout stuffed with poached salmon. She continued with chicken thighs Moroccan style with rice tambal and cherry tomatoes. Sue's pudding was a concoction of hazelnut biscuits, apple, and cassis. 
we come to Linda's table first. So what we're going to start off with are these sort of mushrooms and brandy sauce. And we should have a bit of this. Bread with it. We're so polite here. Yes, right. Yes. And you should go first. And a bit of that herby bread. Shall, Shall we have the herb bread with it? Mm. Uh, oh, I think that's probably the... I think so. I, w I would eat herb bread with anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's nice, because they're not so overcooked that they've gone mushy and lost their flavour. They're mm. very mushroomy mushrooms, which is, which is good, yes? Just getting the brandy through. Just about enough brandy in there, yeah. I think, just to give it the taste through. Yeah. But this is this this is nice. You, you two can move on if you like. Mm. <laughs> All right, <laughs> okay. no. I've finished the mushrooms. They're delicious. Right. Mm. We shall move on. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, and this is a sort of pastry case with the um, baby halibut with a tangy almond sauce. It right. smells wonderful. It does actually. Oh, I think that sauce is, is really rather really good actually. Mm, yes, it is, isn't it? Mm. Mm. This is a nice. It's a good turmeric there, yeah. Mm. Mm. Now, we, we will here? see if pastas are well cooked. Go and do they go with ricotta? Mm. Well, it's most unusual. It is, isn't it? Yeah, I like that. It actually makes the the parsnip quite a quite a delicate flavour, doesn't it? It does. It brings it out more, yeah. a lot more. It, you know, it really does. Parsnip's it's quite. Um, well, I adore roast sweet. parsnips well, most of the time, yeah. Yeah. when they get sort of quite toffee-ish. But this is. That's right. That's very good. Extremely good combination. Mm. That is actually almost a meal in itself. Mm. I was going to say, great vegetarian meal, that. It is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, ex mm. excellent vegetarian dish. Good meal. And mm. finally... Good. Mmm, finally pudding. French apple pie is one of the things that I do enjoy making because I've got a French cookery book that tells you that when you make the pastry, you're supposed to do it with your hands, yeah. all kind of mushy. That looks a lot neater than the ones that I usually make. <laughs> <laughs> I dig in I'm sure it. yours are extremely well made. Well, they're very provincial. <laughs> or Provençal, should oh, I Provençal, say. Provençal, <laughs> Mm, it's a nice pastry. A bit strong on the cinnamon, but... Mm. Oh, I don't mind that. I love cinnamon and apple together. So I like it. I just didn't, I thought mm. it was... Yeah. For my yeah. taste, I thought it was a little yeah. bit strong. Mm. Let's have a look at the cooling. Yes, how's the, how's the famous cooling? <laughs> because the cooling is a wonderful colour, actually. That's good. It has yeah. that lemon. You can taste the lemon in it. It's mm. good. Right? It's a, 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 a sharpness to it. It's a very nice tart, that. It's good. It's a good very nice tart. Excellent. Um, we better move on. Mm. I'm not going to leave you alone with the remnants. <laughs> <laughs> well, my first impression of Malcolm's is that it is really extremely pretty. Yep. It does look wonderful. Right, so I suppose, showing. I mean, we're either going to be paralysed mm. with visual admiration or we'd uh, probably better, better start eating yeah. it. Right. I'm interested to try this combination of the orange with the lobster. Mouth is busy. Sorry. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. We're all. Mm-hmm. Mmm. It is actually a good combination. I think. I think that that works. It's. It does work actually. Yeah. Mm, I was yeah. quite uh, apprehensive about it yeah, at first, I, but I, I once, was... you, once you get into the mouthful, mm. yep. you can you can taste it through. It's good. Okay. Onwards. Well, that's an interesting presentation, isn't it? Yes. Mm. That's really lovely. You, you have, yes. have a carrot. Let's have a carrot. Have a carrot. I like, I like well, the nice idea of yeah. tapenade lost yes. with, with lamb, because it's very, I mean, it's hardly even a sauce. It's, no. you know, a bit of a black olives and garlic, and should give it a little Mediterranean flavour. Vegetables are me. nice and crisp, yep. which is how they should be, I mm. think. That Not is, soggy and full of flavour. That is really good taste. Mm. That is delicious. It's exactly how it should be. Yeah, mm. great bit of lamb. Yes, good. And great tapenade. Here we go, that. pêche a la Alcatraz. <laughs> it's wonderful. We're going to go for the big breakout now. Oh my God. Well, who's, who's going to burst? The... Well, I think you should. You yeah. should, you're the lady. I think yeah. you should. Well, I'm going to do this. Like sort of breaking a champagne bottle over the actually, bow of a ship. this is interesting. Now, how would one eat this? With a spoon at the um, table, I suppose? Oh, it would actually look, through, it's, it's so fine. light. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was going to burst all over the place, it but is it very doesn't. Light. That's tasty. It's good. Mm. It's good. Oh, it's wonderful. Mm. It's like toffee mm. apple. Right. Mm. So the whole thing mm. together. Mmm. Mmm. Tasty. That is divine. Is it really? Mmm. A wonderful combination. Very it's nice. very refreshing. Yep. Indeed. Mmm. Skull. Okay. Now, um, 
we've got to try this stuff mange too. I think this is my mange too fork. I'm not is quite. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. And this is speckled tomato vinaigrette. Yep. And we've got salmon mm. and dill. It's good. It isn't a new. It's. I can see the combination of the crispy mange too mm. and the salmon. It works. That's fine. <clears throat> um, but it does need a little bit more. It needs a kick. Yeah, something in it. But the mange too actually works quite. It does, and it's quite it's, well it, with it that. Could be a good build-up to this. Actually. Yeah. So yeah. The, the, okay. the, the planning yes. is right in the. Because it's quite. So, yes, the the conception is is absolutely right. Now, this is very exotic because we have. A, um, a chicken thaw is Moroccan. They've been flavoured with those wonderful squidgy preserved lemons. Yep. And rice timbal with well, a bit of wild rice. Some wild rice. Ordinary mm -hmm. rice and wild rice. And baked tomatoes. Yep. So, Again, lovely presentation. Lovely presentation. And it's a sort of quick trip to Morocco. Mm. What's, what's the stuffing in this? Green olives. Um, God, some spread coriander. And yeah. coriander. Coriander. That is a lovely, lovely mm. lemony sauce. Mm. Very good dish. Yeah, it is. Very tasty. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's a bit it like sending your, your tongue hitchhiking, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> it works wonderfully with the rice. Mm. That's delicious. Excellent. That's good. It works very well. Mm. Yeah. Good dish. Very convincing. Right. Now, on to this. <laughs> Finally. Incredibly photogenic pudding. And this is a little cassis sauce, I suppose, mm. yeah? Which is made out of what? But black, black currants and whatnot. Black currants, yeah. And spiked with any creme de cassis or not? But it, it is creme de cassis. It leave just it is in, creme de cassis. Leave it in the air and it just it looks wonderful. Sticky. Okay. You go? In you go. <laughs> in Britney. <Bridget. laughs> in Britney. Sorry. <laughs> Hazelnut biscuits with toffee, apples, and cassis. Does sound awfully enticing. It's not that hard to eat either. I thought no. you'd have a. Didn't splash all over the place, did it? Slightly greater struggle. Mm. It's sort of user-friendly. It's it? very extremely user-friendly. User that is delicious. And it, it just if anything, I would, I would personally like the, the biscuit to be a little bit, a little bit crisper, maybe, mm. a bit more cooked. But I think the, the combination of the taste is very good as well. I'm yeah. that with that. The only trouble is, <coughs> if you have a really crisp biscuit, then you're likely to share it with the rest of the table. That's right. Like. Yes, you do, you do get that sort of, mm. um, you know, shattering biscuits. But I do like that. Mm. Mm. Oh, no, yeah. I think that's perfect because yeah. the texture of the biscuit, excuse me talking with my mouth, nope. <laughs> just melts the way through. It just melts and it's perfect, I think, for the, really um, for the apples in the, yep. in the middle. Mmm. There we go. Very good. Okay. Now, <laughs> covered in hazelnut biscuits. <laughs> it's wonderful. We should retreat to our luxurious judging area for our huddle. Mm. Okay? So follow me and we'll come back and finish various bits afterwards. Right. Really good. Mm. I actually thought the cauliflower that was, was a bit good. butch for, for the fact that the rest of the meal was really so very delicate. It was rather delicate, yes. yeah. I it, think, was bit, yeah. it wasn't a, a good choice heavy, yes. to yeah. do it that way in was. The, the almond sauce was. Yes, that excellent. was very, very good. And also, I mean, I really do think that those parsnips, parsnips were, were wonderful. wonderful. That was a great a combination dish, of the two. Yeah. The two things were For a meal, it was a bit sort of daunting. It was a bit overpowering. You felt that actually the meal was probably more important mm. than the people The tapenade sauce was good. I thought they cooked the lamb very well. So that was that was good. Yeah, yeah, that was excellent. Well, the French might have done it on a point system. That's if you look at it that right. way. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I think that all that's that. a very yes. French way of looking yeah. at it. <laughs> <laughs> Japanese, I think. Well, yet again, we've deliberated, cogitated, and digested and come to our conclusions. And I'm afraid we ate too much in the process as well. But before we tell you who this week's winner is, I'd like to ask my guests to sum up some of their thoughts about what we've been tasting. Eugene, what stood out for you? Um, I think Malcolm's main course stood out for me. The, I thought the tapenade sauce was very good. I got the, it's. I like that type of eating. It was good, and the lamb was cooked very well. Uh, th that sort of shone out. But everything, I mean, it takes so much doing. It was very, very good indeed. Very good standard. And Angela? Two things, really. First of all, the overall presentation of the food from, from all three contestants. But before she goes, I must ask Linda for the recipe for the, uh, for the parsnips and the ricotta Ooh, sauce. Yes. Because um, I know she served it as a, a vegetable side yeah. dish, but actually made on a larger scale, that would be a wonderful supper That's dish. Right. It was mm. really very, it was very, very tasty. tasty. Mm. Very good. Well, I think it's, it's very appropriate that our last regional final should end on a cliffhanger. And my God, we were teetering on the edge of the cliff for a long time, but someone had to win. And in the end, we decided that it would be Sue Longdon 
Many congratulations, Sue. She's the 1991 Master Chef of the Northwest, and she goes through to the semifinals, which begin next week, when I shall be joined by my guest judges, by Derek Nimmo and by Sally Clark from the restaurant of the same name. Meanwhile, many thanks to Angela Rippon and Eugene McCoy for being such superlative judges. Many thanks to all our contestants for being such superlative chefs, and see you all next week for the first semi-final of MasterChef.